With the interactive block shadow tool, you can add solid vector shadows to objects and text for a sense of depth and dimension. Unlike drop shadows and extrusions, block shadows consist of simple lines and fewer nodes, making them ideal for screen printing and sign making. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along. The block shadow tool can be found in the Effects tool group on the left toolbar. With nothing selected in advance, the property bar features several grayed out settings that control the appearance and behavior of the block shadow. I'll click the Sweet text to select it, which activates the property bar fields, including the block shadow color, which is black by default. To create the shadow, I'll click again and drag, using the blue lines to preview size and placement. Releasing the mouse button creates the shadow. The block shadow appears in the Objects Docker or Objects Inspector for Mac users as part of the object to which it was applied. A block shadow can also be applied to a group of objects. With the block shadow tool still selected, I'll select the group of cartoon characters, then click and drag to apply the shadow. If I use the Pick tool to select a block shadowed object, then move it, change its scale, or rotate it, the block shadow updates accordingly. When the block shadow tool is active and a shadowed object is selected, I can make adjustments to the shadow. Dragging the color swatch square on the vector handle updates shadow depth and angle. I can also enter exact values on the property bar, such as 0.4 inches for depth and 300 degrees for direction. I'll note these values and apply them to the shadowed group so that everything looks consistent. There are several ways to change shadow color. I can use the swatch in the property bar, use the swatch on the vector handle, or drag a swatch from a palette directly onto the vector handle. To remove the shadow, I'll click Clear Block Shadow. This returns the property bar color to the default black. By default, Shadows are generated from the object outline. So when I apply a shadow to the treats text, whose letters are outlined in light pink, the shadow includes the outlines. When I disable this setting, the outlines remain, but the shadow itself applies only to the filled part of each letter. As long as the shadow is generated from the outline, I can increase the shadow outline by bumping up the expand block shadow value. In this example, there are a few spots where the background appears through holes. If I prefer a solid block shadow, turning on Remove Holes will fill in those spots. This is also helpful for vinyl cut projects when you don't want small shapes being cut out separately. Removing holes will help to simplify the design for professional printing. Otherwise, removing or keeping holes is just a matter of your design preference. Finally, the Block Shadow tool offers additional options for printing and exporting. Enable Overprint Block Shadow to set the block shadow to print on top of underlying objects. To trim overlapping areas between the object and its block shadow, turn on Simplify. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating block shadows in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along.